So now we are going to look at the substitution reaction. And as you can see, clearly this PowerPoint is not made by me. It is from University of Cleveland and from uh, Universal College of Medical Sciences. And of course, you can see clearly it is made by uh, ashokmuria393 at gmail.com. That is the email of the person that make the PowerPoint. So I'm going to make the use of this PowerPoint to make this video class. So uh, of course, uh, we are going to start with the types of the reaction. And if we said a reaction, it means when the reactant is converted to product. And we have different types of this reaction. We have addition reaction, we have substitution reaction, elimination reaction, and then rearrangement reaction. So in the case of substitution reaction, is a type of reaction where usually uh, one particular group is being substituted by another group. Like for example, here we have OH proof. So in a substitution reaction, we can see clearly here the bromide ion is now substituted with OH group. It means that the PR is now replaced or is now displaced by OH group. So when one group is displaced another group in a particular compound. So that type of reaction is called substitution reaction. And then the next one is addition reaction. So in the case of addition reaction, it's usually applied in or where we have unsaturated compound. Like for example, here there is a double one. So the presence of this double one is an indication that this cyclic compound is unsaturated compound. So therefore, since they are unsaturated, it means that they can accommodate more atoms. So that is why here, one pi bond, of course, whenever we have a double bond, so one of the bond is pi and the other one is sigma. So in this case, we can clearly see that one pi bond is being broken and of course two sigma bond are created. So generally in addition reaction, we usually uh, break down high bond and then do generate sigma one and then the next one is elimination reaction so in the case of elimination reaction it's not like a substitution or addition reaction in elimination reaction it means that it is some groups that are completely removed or is completely replaced and usually a double bond is created so it's like an opposite of Addition reaction. In addition reaction. So uh, generally, in this case, we uh, usually, uh, as I said, we usually break down. We usually uh, break down a pi bond, and then sorry, we usually break down sigma bond. And then we generate a pi bond. So in elimination reaction, in this case, we have one, we have two sigma bond here and here. And then some group of atoms are being removed because here the OH group and the free hydrogen here are being removed. And of course, that is why the double bond is formed. And then for the rearrangement, the action is a type of reaction where some group uh, being uh, rearranged. Like for example, here we have a double one. So the molecular skeletal has been rearranged. How does it rearrange? You can clearly see that here, the double bond here is being changed for this position. And of course, there is uh, one methyl group attached here. So in the rearrangement, it means that some group are being changed position from one point to another. So that is the different types of reaction. But specifically, as we said, in this types of, uh, or in this case, we are going to look at the substitution reaction. So in this organic reaction, we have steps of the reaction mechanisms. So in the steps of uh, the reaction mechanisms, we have hemolytic and heterolytic fission. So in the case of homolytic fission or symmetrical uh, fission is when you said fission means breaking down. 
So you see in the case of symmetrical or homolytic is when you have a symmetrical bond breakage. So one bond, one bonding electron state with each product. Like for example, this is the, uh, of course, the reactant. This is the reactant. So we have this as the reactant and also this one as a reactant. So the breakdown. So after the breaking down, the one bonding electron, the one bonding electrons, which is this one, and also this one, it stays with each of the products. So there are two products. So in the, in the symmetrical case, when you break down the uh, compound or the reactant, the, at the end, the product will have one bonding electrons to stay with each of the product. And that is why it's called symmetrical bond breakage when in the case of unsymmetrical bond breakage so it means that the two bonding electrons is set with only one product like for example here we have the reactant here then after the breakage so we can see clearly here the two bonding electrons is set with only one product which is b and it is not actually stayed with a so that is an indication of uh, of unsymmetrical bond breakage. That is in the case of hetero in the case of heterolytic fission. Heterolytic fission. So in the breakage here, in the breakage here, we are going to end off of having the two bonding electrons pair to stay with only one product. And then the next one is symmetrical bond making. So this one is bond making. So in the case of like, this is in the symmetrical bond breakage is like a fusion. Fusion means formation, combination. So fusion breaking and then fusion forming. So in this case, in the case of symmetrical bond making, so one bond electron is donated by each reactant. So you see, this is one electron bonding or one bonding electrons, one one here. So they have all donated, they have all contributed. And of course, in the case of unsymmetrical bond making, so it's also only one product, it's only one product that donates the two bonding electrons. So that is for the heterolytic and hemolytic fission and fusion. So for the fusion is bond making and then for the fusion, fission is bond breakage or bond breaking. So that is this. And then the next thing is, uh, so as we said, we are going to look at the substitution reaction more closely. So in this case, substitution reaction is a process by which one group is substituted for another. So one group is substituted for another. That is what you call substitution reaction. And we have different types of substitution reaction. We have nucleophilic substitution reaction, and that is the one that we are going to look at in this video. So for nucleophilic substitution reaction, the reagent is a suitable nucleophyte nucleophile and it displaces a living group so generally in substitution reaction there is a uh, substrate and the reagent but in the substrate in the substrate there is a living group and then there is a reagent so the reagent that is used in nucleophilic substitution reaction is the nucleophile itself and then of course there is a living group so when the reagent which is a, which of the nucleophile, it displaces the living group. So these types of reaction is called nucleophilic substitution reaction. So the nucleophile displaces living group. So that is why it's called nucleophilic substitution reaction. So what is a nucleophile? A nucleophile are the electron rich species. They are generally have sufficient electrons. They have enough electrons. So they are just looking for the poor center to donate or to give them the electrons and they are usually negatively charged or neutral species they can come as a 
neutral or negative charges so for example we have oh minus we have so for example oh minus is a negative charge c and which is cyanide is minus bromine chloride is minus ammonia and water they are all neutral so these are the examples of nucleophile not that an an anion is beta nucleophile than on charge or neutral species so it means that usually the anions that is the nucleophile with a negative charge they are they, they are the based nucleophile compared to on charge or neutral and of course strong bases strong bases are also good nucleophile so it means that the strongest and the good nucleophile are the bases as well as the negative charge nucleophile so then usually the alkyl halite the alkyl halite are the major substrate in nucleophilic or in nucleophile substitution reaction and that is why here if you can see clearly this is our alkyl halite and then we now react it with the nucleophile so you see that this is the halite so the halite which is x is is the living group and it will now be removed which is the weak nucleophile and then the strong nucleophile will now displaces the x and that is why here we have r anu so it's a substituted product not that always strong nucleophile substitutes weak nucleophile so you should know this so strong nucleophile and the strong nucleophile they are strong bases and then the negative charge nucleophile they are the strongest one and they usually displaces the weak nucleophile so and then we now have different types of nucleophilic substitution reaction we have nucleophilic substitution unimolecular reaction and that is why we call it sn1 because it is unimolecular and then we have unimolecular substitution by molecular reaction which is sn2 so we are now going to look at these two different types of substitution reaction so in a nucleophilic substitution reaction unimolecular that is sn1 the reaction is the displacement of one group that is the living group by another group so there is a displacement of one group and the group that is usually displaced is called a living group by another group and the group that substitutes the living group is called nucleophiles and it is a unimolecular it is called unimolecular why is it that it is unimolecular is because as at the kinetic data the kinetic data indicate that only one species involved in the rate limiting step so in the rate limiting step there is only one species that are involved so that is why it is called unimolecular so the nucleophile is not involved at this stage so sn1 reaction is mostly favored at tertiary alkyl halide and secondary alkyl halide and the lastly alkyl halide so this point is very very important so it means that in the case of sn in the case of sn1 in the case of sn1 so the uh arrangement of term, in terms of the favoring the reaction is that this tertiary alkyl halide is greater than the secondary alkyl halide and the secondary alkyl halide is also greater than the primary alkyl halide so what does that mean as we said the chemical or the kinetics that are suggested that it is called sn1 because it is only one species that is involved in the right limiting step and of course the sn1 reaction is mostly favored from tertiary followed by secondary and then primary alkyl halides so it means that the sn1 reaction it will be more active when the substrate is tertiary and it's also then uh, in the case of uh, secondary it is uh, also more active compared to the primary so it means that the secondary alkyl halide is more suitable 
what is on one reaction followed by secondary and the lastly primary so i think at this point the most important thing that you should hold on is that it is called sn1 because it depends only on one species only of uh, it depends only on one species at the red limiting step and the nuclear file is not involved that is the second important point and then in terms of the uh, reactions favoring or the reaction the sn1 reaction is mostly favored secondary tertiary and then primary so we can decide to see maybe a compound or or a question where you have secondary tertiary as well as the primary alkyl halide then you may be asked to indicate which one will or which one or which of the compound will have the highest sn1 reaction of course is tertiary is tertiary so then the next thing that we are going to look at so this is how it is so this is the order so tertiary is greater than secondary and then secondary is greater than primary so now for example this is clearly if you can now if you can now see this we can see that this is the primary this is the carbon so we have ch3 here and another ch3 another C history that is why it is called tertiary alkyl halite because all the center carbon is all occupied by three different bulky group and then we have IQs KOH so because this one is a substitution reaction so it means that and of course the OH group is more active than the chloride so that is why the OH group replace the chlorides and of course at the end the product called two methyl propanol is generated so when tertiary alkyl halides react when it react with sodium hydroxide in the presence of aqueous medium then two methyl propanol is obtained so now the next thing that we are going to look at is uh, the mechanisms of the SL1. So the first step for the formation of carbocat ion. So generally a carbocat ion is generated. So this carbocat ions is one of the intermediates of the reaction. So tertiary alkyl halide dissociates to form carbocat ions. And of course this is it. So this one is being breaking down. And that is why here you have plus and you have chloride minus which is being removed and this is the rate right limiting step or the rate right determining step of the reaction and of course the rate right determining step of the reaction is the uh, is the slowest step of the reaction so therefore there is a formation of carbocat ions and this is the carbocat ions and then there is also formation of chloride ion so after you have this then the next thing is the nucleophile. So the nucleophile is not involved in this step. Nucleophile is not involved in this step. So it only depends on the substrate and the living group. So the next one is uh, the second step is the nucleophilic attack. So of course, outside the carbocat ions formation, we have OH group, which is now will be attached to the uh to the cation sites and then we'll now have two methyl for final so these are the two steps the first step is the removal of the remo living group and the second is the attack by the nucleophile so these are the two major steps of sn1 reaction mechanisms so of course now let's look at the kinetics so the kinetics so first step of the formation of carbocat ions is the rate limiting step and it involves the substrate what which is the tertiary alkyl halides and then so the rate of the reaction is of a first order why is that it is first order because it doesn't depend on the nucleophile it only depends on the substrate and of course that is why it is called first order reaction
So this is also typical example of the two step. First, there is the removal of Libyan group and to generate carbocat ions. That is the first step. Then the carbocat ions will now react with the nucleophile reagent to generate the final product. And in this case, is 2 methyl orphanol. Let's take your methyl. The intermediate octane in the reaction determine it is stereochemistry. That is a front attack of nucleophile in the cut in the carbocat ions that lead to the retention of configuration and backside attack favors inversion. So the stereochemistry of SN1 reaction is similarization that is the semic mixture of retention and the inversion. So it means that in this case the um and the nucleophile attack the nucleophile attack is usually uh there is what you call an inversion configuration so in some sn one reaction inversion is less greater than the retention so when you said there is inversion of configuration it means that like for example when you have the nucleophile attached to the carbon attached to the carbon at the back side that is what you call or at the opposite side of the Libyan group so that is what we call uh inversion of configuration or the site attack so usually in this case there is a front attack of the nucleophile in the carbon cut ions linked to the tension of configuration so because it is a front attack it's usually maintained like for example the chlorine is move is living here as the chlorine is living in this direction and then the oh group is also attached in the same direction so that is why in this case the sn1 there is retention of racemic mixture and there is no inversion of configuration so that is what we need to understand. No backside attack. So therefore, there is no inversion of configuration. So therefore, the front attack of the nuclear fire in the carbocat ions leads to the retention of configuration and the backside attacks favor inversion. So of course, here there is no inversion of configuration or there is no backside attack. So the stereochemistry of SN1 reaction as the summarization, that's the semic mixture of retention and inversion. So now, so is, you can have a situation where there may be this backside attack. So if there is a backside attack, of course, there would be an inversion of configuration. So when there is a backside attack, there would be an inversion of configuration. And of course, when there is a front attack, there will be a retention. So in some SN1 reaction, inversion is less greater than the retention. So this is due to the fact that as the Libyan groups depart, it is actually hindered front attack and favors back. It hinders front attack and favors back side attack. So of course, if we have this case, it means that most of the compound will be, or most of the product will be in the form of the uh, inversion of configuration because if the, the the fact that the living attacks differ so it's usually hindered it's usually hindered front attack and then fable fables backside attack so whenever it favors that backside attack it means that there will be an inversion of the configuration but if there is no backside attack it's just a front attack it means that there will be retention of the configuration so uh, evidence of sn1 reaction the rate of the reaction depend only upon the substrate so we should get that it only depend on the substrate so that SN1 reaction is unimolecular. So because it depends only on the substrate, that is why it's called unimolecular reaction. And then through chemistry of SN1 reaction is resumization. So there's a resumization. So it involves rearrangement reaction. And then the reaction is favored by polar solvent. And then the order of the reactivity of alkyl halide is SN1. Sorry, in SN1, 
is in order of tertiary is greater than the secondary and then secondary is greater than the primary so uh ladies and gentlemen thank you for listening so in the next video we are going to look at sn2 but for now it is very very important to understand the differences between sn1 and sn2 but for the sn1 you understand that the reaction depends only on the so on once on the substrate and then it is called unimolecular reaction and there is erythromycin there is also rearrangement reaction so thank you therefore now we are going to look at the sn2 mechanism so the sn2 mechanisms stand for substitution nucleophilic bimolecular reaction mechanisms so in this case it is called bimolecular because in the sn2 reaction in the sn2 mechanisms for substitution a nucleophile attacks an alkyl halide on the back of the carbon bearing the living group so that is why and of course it is called bimolecular because the rate of the reaction depend on both it depend on both the nucleophile and the substrates so you see in this case nucleophile and substrates the concentration of the nucleotides and the substrate sorry nucleophile and the substrates it also affects the rate of the reaction and that is why it is called bimolecular and of course as we see here there is a backside attack so it means that the nucleophile is attaching to the carbon bearing the living group from the backside so that is why in this case there is an inversion of configuration so in this case there is a facial bond form and at the transition state and then we have this so if you can clearly see here if you can clearly see here we have the nucleophile and it attached from the back and that is the backside attack and of course the rate of the reaction it depends on both the uh substrates and the nucleophile which is the reagent so another way of saying this is that the reaction is a first order in both nucleophile and the substrate and of course overall is a second order reaction because the uh, rate of the reaction depends on what the concentration of the substrate and the nucleophile so that is why the reaction is overall second order reaction and the rate of the sn2 reaction usually is sensitive to steric hindrance since the nucleophile must possess or must assist the backside of the carbon uh bearing the living group one so the methyl halides are fastest and the tertiary alkyl halides are not react through this pathway so it means that in terms of the arrangement in the, for the sn2 it means that the primary alkyl halides or the methyl the yeah the metal halides is the fastest followed by the primary followed by the secondary and then the slowest is tertiary so it means that in terms of the reaction it is react fastest with metal uh halides then followed by primary and tertiary and then sorry secondary and then finally tertiary so when sn2 of course at a chiral carbon then the product will show inversion of stereochemistry so of course since there is a backside attack so then it means that there will be an inversion of conformation so ladies and gentlemen this is the most important thing that you should understand in the case of substitution reaction both under sn1 and sn2 reaction mechanisms like for example in sn2 there is inversion of configuration while in the other one there will be resemization and of course there is a retention of configuration and then second um, this one is bimolecular because the rate of the reaction is depend on both the substrate and the nucleophile and the other one is uh, of course the 
it is called SN1 because it depends only on the substrate. So ladies and gentlemen, please, if this is the first time you are coming to my YouTube channel, please subscribe. Thank you.